Hi, everybody. Bob Sekoler, Sekoler team over at REMAX Properties East. We help a lot of people both buy and sell homes. And we also have a radio show, a show that takes your questions via email because we are dealing with COVID right now, takes the questions and we ask our team answers. We recently had a question about home inspections, and that went to our home inspector, Brad Lawler. Corey writing in. He's selling his home. He's under contract. The inspections were done, and the inspector wrote up an incredibly long laundry list of needed repairs. And a lot of the repairs, he says, are cosmetic. For example, there's a stain under the sink of the cabinet floor, and the inspector says, no active signs of leak, but there's a stain. And the buyers want the this guy, Corey, to, to fix it, clean it up, or whatever. He says another example is insulation was on the floor in the basement of the house, and the inspector claimed that it was from animals getting in and maybe doing some damage. And Corey says absolutely no chance that an animal was ever in the basement or in the in the uh, little alcoves there. So he's wondering, what does he do? How does he respond to that? How does a, a seller respond when there's a, a series of, of repair requests that are cosmetic in nature? You know, it's interesting because the home inspectors will identify things that say old damage, you know, old evidence of moisture, but no active, you know, leaks right now. These are things that we're going to write up, Mm -hmm. but we are simply identifying those defects. It's the agents are the ones who convert those defects into the repair requests. So, you know, cosmetic items, that's really outside of the scope of a home inspection anyway. Um, You know, those are not anything that we've really see we don't document things like a stain on a carpet unless there's you know there's an active water leak that's caused it so cosmetic items are outside the scope so i would think that the buyer's agent uh, is the one who would have been responsible for creating those uh, repair requests. And yep. again, I know that that's just part of the negotiation process. So, you know, Bob, I know you've had situations, uh, you know, that you've talked to me about where, th- where people have sent in, you know, 14 page long, you know, repair requests because they basically take the home inspection and say, here, go <laughs> fix this. Yeah. You know, the home mm-hmm. inspection is, is meant to identify what are called material defects. You know, those things that are going to cost more than a thousand dollars to repair or those things that are, are safety uh, concerns. You know, that's really what the purpose of the home inspection Preach is. Preach it, Bradley. To, I mean, there, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of um, agents that will send in full repair request yeah. summaries and be like, and, and, and nothing else as a repair right. request. And you're like, what are you asking for? Right. Are, you, are yeah. you just giving me this? Is this a formal request? Which is Kevin will tell us, we probably need a formal request, not just sending over a summary saying, oh, the inspector people if you don't have a qualified agent or an agent who has been in the business for a while and knows the right way to build relationships and to communicate with the other agent on the other side sometimes you will see that and it is one of my biggest pet peeves i know my wife's as well um and -hmm. i know brad probably gets it too because then they see and and i'm sure you guys sign many con you know everyone signs a disclosure and a waiver form explaining exactly the scope Mm -hmm. of what you guys do and and how you're, you know, you're, you're paid to find deep material defects and structural problems and note. And then but you're not the real estate expert, right. <laughs> you're the inspector. And the right. real estate expert is the one who is, should be walking you through. Well, let me, let me jump in. Let me jump that in request. on behalf of agents throughout our area and the rest of the country that I think most agents will try to stay, have a level head mm-hmm. and say, okay, we're supposed to only ask for structural or safety issues. But there are many buyers who, many first time buyers who have never gone through this process before. And I can tell you, well, setting the expectations is one thing, but I will tell you there have been multiple times where a buyer's parents looked at the inspection report and said, Oh, you got to get this done. This is ridiculous. You're paying a lot of money for this house. You have to get this, this. And so the buyers are now just responding to the parents. You want to respect the parents. And as a result, let's face it. Um, it's our job, even though we're supposed to set the expectations, sometimes it goes through. So, well, that's okay. Just yeah. don't send the summary. Well, one of my problems I see is people use it as a negotiation. They, they overpay for a property yeah. knowing they're overpaying in this yeah. environment. Mm-hmm. And then they use the inspection mm-hmm. report to renegotiate the price back down to what they really wanted to pay. Well, for guess it. what? In this market, that sometimes will shoot you right in the foot with that plan because we have clients many of this happens a lot of times now, they 14 bids on a home, right? 14 contracts. We won. 
Repair request comes back, Lake Forest House, rotting window sills, lots of windows in those homes. But it's a case of how bad you want it, right? Because if we go back to the sellers and negotiate now and say, we want uh, in lieu of repairs, whatever the situation is, money off, um, or we want to walk and we're scared, this is where setting expectations comes through and having the experience to know if these homes are still viable, what the structure is, having the rest of the repair request or the inspection report rather to show you, okay, yeah, in our experience, it shows this this house is structurally sound. And Bob, you know very well, we had the same issue in our in our Springhurst home where some of the uh, sills were rotting out and had to be replaced and mm-hmm. all that kind of good stuff. And, and, you know, so the question is, do you back off and put it back on the market? Cause I guarantee you there's 13 other people who may want to take that risk with that home, especially in that area with prices the way they are and in, in inventory, the way it is. So and I would tell you that to all buyers, that there is a diminishing return to asking for everything or a lot of things in a repair request, especially if they're obviously cosmetic and are not supposed to be there. I have been on the seller side as I am all the time these days where the seller simply say, nah, let's put it back on the market. We actually go back and say, seller will make no repairs. And then the buyers are faced with either uh, going forward with the house without anything being done and or going back out and looking for another house. So be aware let's that- Let's face the, it, inventory uh, is bleak. So the sellers have all the low. sellers have the juice. Well, Bob yeah. mentioned one earlier that we have one yeah. just like it. The parents who haven't been through the process, uh-huh. haven't had 12 contracts rejected, at the last minute, took a look. Oh, son, daughter-in-law, you you can't. You need to ask for this. Well, mm-hmm. like Greg says, seller's got 15 in line behind them, and uh, that's going to torpedo that transaction. Thank you, Brad. You do a great job as always, and you can reach me. If you're looking to sell a home, you can reach out to me directly. Call me at 502-376-5483. I'll come out. We'll set up a plan and get you sold and, and onto your next house. And speaking of getting onto your next house, we have some 12-plus agents who are ready to help you find your next home. All you need to do is give me a call at 376-5483. I'm Bob Sikoler. Thanks for watching.